In the Bible, the veil has a very important meaning for all of us. Some try to put this veil back on your face, between you and God. You know that the veil serves to separate, to hide something. Let's talk about this veil. There are passages in the Bible that talk about it, but I will speak about two occasions that are more relevant to this topic. When Moses, on Mount Sinai, spoke to God, there was a time when his face shone the presence, the shine of God's presence made his skin shine. Then, when Moses coming down from the mountain and he would speak to God, the people would see his skin, his face shining. For the people to have some comfort, per se, because the people feared being in direct contact with God. They will ask Moses, you speak to God, and later you tell us what he said. They didn't want to speak to God. They didn't see themselves in a position to do so. So they asked Moses to put a veil on his face. The text says, and when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. You can read this at the end of chapter 34 of the book of Exodus. So this, throughout the Old Testament, symbolized the separation between God and the human being. Because not only the face of Moses, but even in the tabernacle, and later in the Temple of Solomon, there was a veil that separated the Holy of Holies, a place where only the priests had access, where the menorah was, the table with the showbread, the incense altar, the first room of the tabernacle, and beyond that room was the Holy of Holies. And these two rooms, the Holy Place and the Holy of Holies, were separated by a veil, a thick, heavy veil. Some even believed it to be made with animal skins or a strong fabric. So, this veil was used to separate the Holy of Holies from the other places, and only one person had access to the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was. This person was the High Priest, who once a year he could enter, and he would intercede on behalf of the people. When the Lord Jesus died on the cross, which is what we celebrate on Good Friday, when he gave up his spirit and said it was finished, and his spirit left him, the veil in the temple, the temple that he visited several times, the temple rebuilt by Herod, the veil that was there, separating the Holy of Holies from the holy place, was torn from top to bottom. In other words, to show there was something supernatural, because no man could tear that veil from top to bottom. It was God who tore the veil, exposing the Holy of Holies and giving the people free access to God. So the veil was torn. That's why they say the veil was torn. Nowadays, people have the freedom to access the presence of God. You don't have, for example, to come to the pastor and say, 
Pastor, speak to God on my behalf. Yes, the pastor can even pray for you. The prayer for one another is a fact. It's a right that we have to intercede on behalf of those who don't pray, those who are not seeking. But you who have access to God, you who know the Word of God, you should not be in the dependence of other pastors or anyone else, whoever it may be, a bishop, an archbishop, whoever it may be, that you are on that addiction, on that habit, please put my name down for prayer. Pray for me. You should not do that. Why? Because you have direct access to the Father. It's as if you were saying, you have a father and a mother, and you speak to your siblings like this. Tell our parents that I sent my regards. You never call the father or mother, but you tell your sibling, send mom my regards. Tell her that I'm fine. Did she say something to me? You never call your mom, but you tell your sibling to tell your mom that you said something. Is that fair? You, in the shoes of a parent, would you do that? How would you feel if your child is always sending a message through someone else? You will grab the phone and call them. My child, what is wrong? Have I forbidden you? To call me? Isn't that what you will say? Likewise, is God. Many are in this dependence. Pray for me. Put my name down for prayer. As if the veil is still there between them and God. Please, don't cancel what Jesus did on the cross for you. Don't despise, don't cancel. Don't disconsider what Jesus did on the cross for you. You have the right to talk to God just as I have. Do you know what is the distance between you and God, between me and God? It's the same. It's one name. It's called Jesus. When you speak to God in the name of Jesus, you have access to God. When I speak to God in the name of Jesus, I have as much access as you do. So I am not closer to God than you. And this is something you must watch over, because what we have the most, especially on the internet, are those so-called pastors, preachers, People who give themselves a title on the internet. Because you know, the internet is a place where people who have never influenced anyone in real life, but automatically they become influencers. But this is another topic. And then you have someone on the internet telling you, I will pray for you. Give me your name. I will make a purpose of prayer on your behalf. In reality, that person only wants followers. They don't want to pray for you, because if they wanted to pray, they will simply do it. They want followers. They want captive people, people who will follow them on social media. They want clicks. They say, today you have a blessed day. If you believe, type below, Amen. They want clicks. They want the social media engagement. They want to grow their social media profile. They're not worried about your growth, but the growth of their social media. So many want to put themselves between the person and God, between the person and the altar. They will say, I will receive your request. I will receive your tithe or this or that. Once there's an altar that the person can go freely, many want to put themselves between the person and the Bible. No, you don't need to read the Bible. I will read the Bible on your behalf. I remember that I was brought up in a church that we were not encouraged to read the Bible. We would receive a paper and they would read the Bible. We could not. So many today have been placing themselves between the people and God, between the people and the altar, the 
people and the Bible. Internet pastors wants to keep you captive as a evangelical horoscope. I'll give you the psalm of the day. Psalm of the day is that. A verse of the day for you is that one. The only one to give a number for you to play the lottery or the color of the clothes you should be wearing. In other words, they want to keep people captive. They want to put the veil back on your face between you and God once the Lord Jesus has already torn this veil. From this, you should run away from because the true man of God does not keep you captive to him. The true man of God connects you with God. He does not allow you to be dependent on him. He teaches you to connect with God and makes you spiritually independent, dependent on the Holy Spirit. That's why we work so hard for people to receive the Holy Spirit, because when you receive the Holy Spirit, he is your guide, he is your teacher, he teaches you, he guides you. You depend on no one. The church is a place we should attend. God set masters, pastors, men of God to guide us. But learn this, the man of God does not make you to be dependent on him. The man of God does not put himself between you and God or between you and the altar. The man of God connects you with God. He makes you to know the true shepherd and bishop of your soul who is called the Lord Jesus. Those who don't do that for you, run away from them because they are not pastors. They are mercenaries. They are in search of something else from your life. Don't let the veil that once was torn be put back on your face and distance you and separate you from God. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.